Alright guys, I want to show you something here real quick. I'm going to climb up this ladder and show you that um, above this canopy, you have to be really careful to get to a position to where you might can see it. You got to be really careful you're not missing this very bottom edge right here. And it is a little dark out here. Um, but see this very bottom edge of where the water comes down, leaking off the roof or just rainwater falling. It hits the top of this canopy, which goes down the length of this building, and then rebounds back onto the wall area. And if you don't get up here and look or step back far enough, you won't see that. And I have seen guys make everything look good except for that bottom six or eight inches. And when the property owner or manager comes back on Monday, ready to cut your check, everything looks great, but they see this from the highway. So make sure you, you step back far enough or either get on a little step ladder and look at it like I am. And you know, if you have to get up here and directly soft wash that or, you know, uh, do, put a little bit of water pressure on it, two or 300 PSI, and it should come right up. Now, oftentimes when you're pre-treating this side, which are sodium hypochlorite, it's going to run down and drip on that, but sometimes it's kind of inconsistent. I do see, I don't know if you can tell on camera, but I do see a couple spots we're going to catch. Either you can get back far enough to get a line of sight on it, or come up on a small step ladder where you get a line of sight on it and clean that up. That really is going to make a difference. Now, this top band as well, sometimes you can treat that two or three times with, with sodium hypochlorite, and you still may need to do what we call a power rinsing on it, like we were talking about before. Two or three hundred PSI on a shooter tip. Even an X jet would get you there if you had a four gallon per minute machine. If you got a five and a half gallon per minute machine or above, you can use a shooter tip or something like that just to kind of clean that up. Sometimes you got a couple spider webs you might have to knock off too. So that's all a good idea to make very close attention to that. Now, once we come below this canopy, well, we know we can touch everything. So let's go down and take a look at this. We know touching all of this is fairly easy. You do it from the ground just with your extension I mean with your um, regular wand with no extension just make sure again when you're getting around some of these canopy lights these lights are usually hooked up in series so it's some pretty stout voltage run into it quite a bit not your regular 110 it could be phased up a pretty good bit and you don't want to blow these out. Sometimes you blow one out and they all blow out if they in line, almost like Christmas lights, if you will. So you gotta be careful with that. Wash around them if you can. And look, if you gotta bring out the brush to kind of touch up around them, you do so. But you need to be charging enough for it. And again, I teach you how to charge for this type of work on BillyDavidsonVIP.com and go down and look until you see how to estimate commercial pressure washing jobs and again there's sample contracts in there as well so right here we surface cleaning this sidewalk it's not much of a sidewalk but nonetheless we are using a surface cleaning on it and again you don't want to linger in front of these doors now like we was talking about before we don't want to shove water under these doors so if you happen to have some gum removal here that could be a problem, but I'm kind of demonstrate how we would do it. But basically what we would want to do is take a pressure tip on our wand, lower the PSI on your machine, lower the RPMs. You don't need no more than maybe a thousand to twelve hundred PSI. And you take your wand and what we call trim work all the way down where the surface cleaner's not gonna get. And how much is the trim work? It's really narrow, and what's important is you don't trim it too wide because if you do trim it too wide, two things are going on. You're wasting time on the wand. You're doing something that the surface cleaner is designed to do. Secondly, you're spending too much time in front of the door, so we want to trim this tight about an inch out from the wall 
That way you're not lingering here too long and you're passing by pretty quickly to get it trimmed out. I have seen guys make the mistake and trim out really wide around these doors thinking they can go around it with the surface cleaner out here. But what happens, you're spraying this water and it's bouncing back under this door. So you're really defeating the purpose. Now, if we had gum in front of these doors, what we would want to do is pretty much get at the angle I'm at now and try to, to pop them out, pushing the water that away. Now, if you're standing, if your gum is here, spots of gum, and you're standing here and shooting the water, obviously it's gonna go right into that door. So you don't want to stand at a 90 degrees to this door under no circumstances and start trying to take gum off, shooting your water back into that away. Seems like a no-brainer, but you know, just to remind you, you want to come at this angle just to remove gum. Now, if you're noticing you're getting water under the door, that's where you might have to get, unfortunately, something like a screwdriver or a flat chisel and try to take up those pieces of gum if they're gonna be a problematic. A lot of times there's a doormat goes here and there's no, there's not a lot of gum in front of them. But if you do, you either put that in your contract where you, you know, you're gonna do what you can without pushing water under the door, or you can charge extra by removing them manually with some type of tool. There are some gum removal machines out there that use very little water that is very effective for that. So if you're doing a lot of gum removal, you may want to look into that gum removal machine. But if you're just generally pressure washing, now you want to kind of clean up around these doors the best you can, but uh, let your customer know, you're not going to push water inside these doors just chasing after a couple pieces of bubble gum that's going to be down there the next day anyway. So think about that, guys. And y'all hang tight. We got some more to show y'all. If y'all liking this so far, please hit that like button. It means a lot to me. Leave a comment if it's light, if you're liking it so far. That way I can continue to make more of these videos if I see that I was getting some views out here and it's helpful. That's the main thing. I want it to be helpful. And guys, I don't know if y'all see what I'm seeing, but I'm seeing money late. Somebody dropped some money on the ground. I don't know if y'all noticed it. Look at all this money. See that red fire lane? It definitely needs to be repainted that's i'm always looking for the upsell so i'm definitely going to be hitting this up for this fire lane and they also have some parking spots out here these don't look great but they don't look terrible either so these could need a restriping so a lot of times we go in and wash these buildings like this make a ton of money and then come back and stripe them they make a ton of money again and we could do that every six months. So, you know, just think if you got 10 or 15 of these on the books, you're doing every six months. They're almost good, you know? So, y'all hang tight. I'm going to show y'all a few more things. 